A routine trip to the grocery store with her mother ends with a young Georgia girl being sexually assaulted in the store aisle. Her case is raising new questions about how court records are handled in the age of technology. And when it comes to sexual assault survivors, some say the current system leaves them to being victimized over and over again. To be honest, I was going to jump on him and tear his face off. Like all of us, 51-year-old April makes such frequent trips to the grocery store, they all feel the same, except this particular day. You're in the store shopping with your kids. April remembers turning her back for a quick second to reach for a can of vegetables. And in that time, a stranger walks by and sexually touches her little girl. That's how quick it was. Prosecutors charged a 73-year-old predator with three counts of sexual battery. We're not showing you his face or telling you his name in order to protect the little girl's identity. It's the same courtesy April wants the courts to give sex crime victims like her daughter. I do think like this is always something that she'll, she's going to remember. April and her family were ready to put the incident behind them, but something led her to the Athens Clark Clerk of Courts website. I just wanted to find out more. The mother of two was frozen in front of her computer, paralyzed by what she was seeing. I was just in shock. She was staring at her daughter's name next to every detail of what happened to her. And if she can, everyone could read it right there on the Athens Clark Clerk of Courts website. When you report it to the police and you go through the court system, they always promise your name will not be released. No one will know your name. We really protect the names of sexual assault victims. They promised us that too. And now it's on the internet for anybody to see. It wasn't just April's daughter. The 11 Alive investigators found details about sex crimes committed against several other children on the county's website. We didn't even need the victim's names. The suspect was enough. It's just bad. One, it's re-victimization. Andrew Agustin is the CEO and general counsel for the Children's Advocacy Centers of Georgia, or CAC. Two, there's privacy concerns. Three, there's security concerns. Four, when the child's old enough, the child may Google herself or himself and see that information. It's exactly the kind of potential harm the CAC has worked for years to try to minimize when kids become victims of sex crimes. He says publishing their names online after the case is over is violating those victims over again. Justice may have happened in the courtroom, but there's life continues past the courtroom. And so these, this is one of the things that seems little, but it's really big. And it's one of those things that we need to put a stop to. In this case, the person who can stop it is Beverly Logan, the Athens Clark Clerk of Court. When the 11 Alive investigators reached out to her by phone, she said no one ever complained about the county posting unredacted documents about sex crime victims on their website. And quote, I can see where that can be disturbing, but we did it as a service to the public. That public service is why more and more court systems across the country are moving their records online. It makes it easier for the public to have access to them. In Georgia, all state and superior courts are legally required to use e-filing in civil cases by January 1st, 2019. There is no such mandate right now for criminal cases, but a growing number of counties already offer that as a public service. Is the availability of electronic records complicating this? It's incredibly efficient. But as you can see, as you found in your reporting, there's, there's things that they still need to do. It's a gap that something fell through that I think is preventable, and we need to fill that gap. athens Clark County isn't the only one publishing the names of sex crime victims online. Several of Georgia's 159 counties face the same dilemma as they move their court records online. There's currently no law in Georgia prohibiting any of these court clerks from posting documents that identify sex crime victims on their websites. I, it just blows me away. In contrast, Cobb County is one of a few counties taking steps to minimize any potential harm. The county clerk told the 11 Alive investigators in a statement that the office restricts internet access for any victim, no matter their age. This is for sexual crimes only. This procedure is a courtesy of the clerk. A courtesy other counties like athens Clark don't offer right now. In fact, Logan said they'd never even thought about the impact. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know, and now they know. And so at some point, once you know something that's causing harm, you've got to address it. Your fight is to get it off the internet. Off the internet, that's all I want. Because, you know, 
who knows if one day somebody's going to Google a person's name and that'll pop up. For now, no one outside April's family knows about that day inside the grocery store. And April prays it stays that way. That's a right I think as a citizen you should have. Like, you're not the criminal, you're the victim. All you did was just live that day. So Faith, after weeks of trying to get an interview with the clerk of court, have you heard back? We finally heard back from her this week. And remember, she originally said this was disturbing. She would look into it and try to fix it. But now in her statement, she's saying, no, I'm not breaking any laws, so things stay as they are. But again, this is not a legal question. This is about what's right and what's wrong. And what happens now? The director over at the Children's Advocacy Centers is really interested in getting this fixed. And now he's telling me he's researching what can be done.